Hey everybody, I'm sitting here with my very, very good friend and longtime collaborator, Boots Autostad. Uh, he is a songwriter and producer, but also, even though you may not know who he is, you have certainly heard his voice, and he'll explain that in a moment. Uh, he has worked on uh, campaigns for Folgers and Budweiser and super huge internationally renowned artists like Robbie Williams and Tim McGraw. So, we're going to start here. Hey, Boots. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. There you go. <laughs> from the Nor- from a Norwegian. I bet you didn't know that one of the most American jingles was sung by a Norwegian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, perfect segue. You were the voice of Folgers, Budweiser, and Mellow Yellow. How do opportunities like that come about? I think you have to stay in the game to get these opportunities so and then be on the lookout for them so for example the jingle singing thing came about because i was writing with a friend of mine called dan dyer uh in new york city and he kept telling me he was getting all this jingle work and i said well how do you get that jingle work and then he said well i have a jingle agent what's a jingle agent uh and so i got introduced to that person and i've been with them for 14 years now singing jingles for them so it's kind of seeing an opportunity when it's there and then being willing to step outside of your comfort zone to see what would happen if you tried it on very interesting I wish I was saying that Uh, here's another question so you write for artists but at the same time you also write for film and TV and television commercials how do you know when what you're writing is right for a certain artist I think you go in trying to write for a certain artist and 99% of the time it doesn't end up with that artist because there's just too much going on for that artist and if you're lucky it happens to go somewhere else instead, somewhere even better maybe. I was going to ask a different question but to just uh, riff off of that, sort of like a quick two-parter, how many songs a year would you say that you write? maybe a hundred and of that hundred how many of those hundred would you say kind of generate some type of revenue five okay i just wanted you guys to hear that um the next question is how important are lyrics when writing for an artist versus a brand I think they're always incredibly important, both for a brand and for an artist, but you've got to know what you're trying to write for. So if you're trying to write for an artist, you've got to figure out who they are, what they want, and also what their marketplace wants, and listen to similar artists who are huge already, try to see what they're singing about, what the kids seem to want from the songs that they're singing about and kind of try to go down that route for a second. If you're singing for a brand, it's the same thing. Listen, I've tried to listen to to commercials on TV without listening to the talking, but only listen to the music. Forget everything that's being said with dialogue or voiceover. Only listen to the music. What is it they're getting at? What is it they want? And you can start figuring out kind of like the formula because it's all very formulaic. Pop music's formulaic. Branding's formulaic. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I have two more quick questions. Obviously, Boots is a fantastic singer, and really he began, like so many of us, in bands. So how do you transition from being in a band to writing songs? Not for for the band. I think if you know that you're a songwriter, and that puts you in different rooms as... uh, musically let me start that again if you're the songwriter of the band a time will come if you've moved to one of the bigger cities whereby you get put into rooms with people because you're supposed to write songs for your record and before you know it that starts transitioning into just writing songs for whoever or for whatever I think that if you're not in one of the big cities, I think it's important for all artists and songwriters to just try it out with your peers in your local community and just see what this thing is and see if it can improve your own songwriting. Uh, And I think I go into... I've been at this. I've had records out now for 
four decades. I'm going to be coming up to my fifth decade, which is a long time. And every time I go into a session, I'm still learning. Learn, I'm still learning something new, especially from younger writers. Quick side note question: uh, How open to you? How open are you to new collaborators? Depends, because uh, you only have so much time per week to write and then produce whatever it is you're making. And I would like to say I'm wide open to new collaborations all the time. Problem is, there isn't enough time. So therefore, you ch if you have a couple of teams that you love, you stick with them. And if somebody is presenting you with something new, it's going to have to be something that really rocks your world before you go in and do it. In my case, which is I think is often the case with someone who has experience and maybe our calendars are just a little bit too full already. Interesting. Uh, this is kind of a general question. What is one general tip that you would give to somebody getting started and trying to get into, as you refer to, the game? Try to work with people who are better than you. Maybe not better than you, but who have more experience and have already done it because they need you because you're fresh, you have fresh new ideas, but you need them because they can plug you into the greater system. Oh, that was a good one. Boots, thank you very much. Appreciate your friendship and your time here. Thank you, buddy. All right, man. We just shook hands for everybody now. See you next time.